Gulzar the Gorilla A True Story of Belief by Andy Swindles Chapter 1 His name is Gulzar the Gorilla. His mom is named Priscilla and they both live in a villa near the sea. It was Monday morning and young Gulzar was on his way to exotic animal primary school with his bestest buddy in the world, Ricky the Orangutan. Gulzar was suffering from a throbbing sore nose on this particular morning as he had accidentally wedged a small rubber Super Bowl deep within his extra wide nostrils the day before. He had somehow managed to do this silly thing whilst larking around in the garden with Terry the tape here instead of knuckling down and doing math homework in the kitchen. It was one of the many downsides of being a gorilla in the 21st century. That and having thick body fur that took ages to dry and calm down after a bath. Ricky Orangutan was in a splendid mood on this lovely sunny day. Hey, Gulzar, what do you think of our new relief teacher? He asked, valuing Gulzar's opinion. Gulzar scratched his head and replied, Miss Perkins, she's sort of all right. You know, for a human, I suppose. But she can be a little weird sometimes. Like the creepy way she looks right through you as if she can read your mind. I find it much easier to keep my head down and crack on with the work and avoid the all-seeing evil Perkins eye. Ricky laughed out loud and said, Yeah, bro, I totally get what you mean. She kind of spooks me out. I couldn't sleep properly on Friday night. After thinking about what she said about today's lesson, Gulzar nodded, remembering the last information she had instructed the class before the home time bell had rung. Be prepared for a massive, life-changing revelation on Monday morning. This will be known as Class Enlightenment Day. You have been warned. Gulzar never gave it a second thought. Now here he was, sat down at his small wooden desk in the classroom, and the lesson was about to begin. Gulzar reached down into his leather satchel to grab his workbooks and pen. When Miss Perkins instructed the entire class to leave their books where they were, there were a lot of strange, perplexed glances passed between pupils who were wondering what was on the agenda for this supposedly life-changing lesson. Miss Perkins picked up a piece of chalk from her desk and wrote a single word on the blackboard. Anthropomorphize. Turning back around to look at the blank expressions on the faces of the children, she asked, Does anyone here know what that word means? Janet, the clever clogs chimpanzee, raised her hand and replied, Is it the study of ants? Miss Perkins shook her head and answered, No, Janet, that's myrmecology. Anyone else here want to hazard a guess? There were no takers in the group. It was an incredibly hard word for this bunch of seven-year-olds to identify. Well, class, it means giving human characteristics to animals. The class sat there looking perplexed, wondering where this first lesson was going. Miss Perkins sighed heavily, then continued speaking. Take you, Gulzar, for example. If you were a real-life gorilla, the likelihood of getting you to sit at that desk would be highly improbable, if not impossible. Chances are you would go on the rampage, fighting with the various other anthropomorphized creatures in this room. Gulzar blushed as he held up his hand to speak. But miss, I, I am a real gorilla. Miss Perkins shook her head and replied, I speak the truth when I say, none of you here are real. Not a single bit of these fictitious surroundings exist in reality. Even I am a figment of someone else's warped imagination. The children laughed nervously at the absurdity of this implication. Miss Perkins held up her hand for silence. I will prove it to you. Alan Ardvark, would you please go to the classroom window and tell me what you see outside? Alan stood up and walked over to the window that was directly facing out to the playground. He stopped a couple of yards away from the glass, his body frozen with fear. Alan spoke with genuine terror in his voice. Nothing! It's all... white! Everything is gone! The rest of the class jumped up from their seats panicking to see if this was just an elaborate joke or for real. 
Tommy Tiger freaked out and ran to the classroom door after seeing the whiteness that had encompassed everything outside. He was truly petrified. Don't open that door. Miss Perkins shouted at the top of her lungs. Tommy froze with his paw trembling on the handle. If you open that, everything here ceases to exist. Chapter 2 Gulzar wasn't stupid. He had always been good at asking the right questions. Miss Perkins, you said that none of us exists here, so how can something that doesn't exist cease to exist? The question was greeted with a few supportive mumbles of yeah. Penny the panda was sobbing hysterically in the corner, surrounded by a group of sympathetic Tasmanian devils. Miss Perkins pulled a packet of cigarettes from her desk drawer and lit one up. The class looked horrified that she would do this, knowing it was strictly against the rules. The teacher took a long drag on this cigarette and inhaled the nicotine, then slowly released the smoke through her nostrils. Listen up, kids. This is incredibly complicated. See this? She said, holding the cigarette up to emphasise the issue. This is just a prop. I can't stand smoking. It's a vile, dirty habit, and it really should be banned everywhere. The point is, I don't exist, and neither does this cancer stick in my hand. I mean, who are you going to report me to? Gulzar had a horrible feeling in his gut and was starting to fret a little. Wishing that Miss Perkins would elucidate what was happening to them, so they could collectively figure out a solution to the dilemma. The teacher put the cigarette out by grinding it into the blackboard. Okay, class, here's the deal. I will tell you what I know. Please feel free to ask any pertinent questions if I don't make myself clear. There was a hushed silence in the room while the class waited for the explanation. Okay then, here it goes. The guy who is writing this bizarre story has a young, occasionally lazy grandson who asked him to carry his kid's scooter up a steep hill for him when they were having a late afternoon walk and were returning home for dinner. The writer knew his young grandson was swinging the lead and trying it on, as per usual, so he said to the boy, I can't lift anything heavy with my left arm today as I have been wrestling with a gorilla named Gilbert who had pulled my arm out of the socket and now the arm is useless. It was just an off-the-cuff distraction ruse to get the kid back on the scooter. That is where you come from, Gulzar. But, miss, my name is Gulzar, not Gilbert, Gulzar replied. Miss Perkins smiled and said, Bravo for spotting that, Gulzar. The guy was going to write a short story for his grandson featuring the exploits of Gilbert the gorilla. First, using a tiny bit of due diligence, he had used the search engine Google to see if the name Gilbert had been used in a gorilla story before. Lo and behold, it had. So did every single regular boy's name he typed into the search engine. That was when he realised that the gorilla's children's story platform had been done to death, along with dragons, bears, lions, unicorns and other popular animal stories. There was no practical point in continuing the tale. Yet the gorilla voice was strong and compelling. So he decided to write this abstract nonsense as a catharsis of sorts after recovering from a recent bout of pneumonia that had disturbed his writing routine. Gulzar raised his hand again. You said the entire list of boys' names had been taken. Then how come I have this name? Well... The writer had been saving the name Gulzar for another book. He may still use it for a villain's forename at some point in the future. He had spotted the unusual forename of Gulzar many years ago whilst driving down Stockport Road on the way out of Manchester. It was the name of an Asian cash and carry warehouse and it always made him giggle when he saw it. He makes no apology for being a simpleton. Gulzar smashed his hand down on the desk in anger and said, He is a simpleton. Why write a horror story like this for his grandson? There's no happy ending. 
Miss Perkins held up her hands in mock surrender and rolled her eyes in agreement, then replied, Stories don't always have happy endings. I shall tell you why. Chapter 3 On the very same day that he told his grandson that fictitious yarn as a bit of a joke, one of the first news articles he read online before beginning the first chapter of this story was that over 500 endangered vultures died of poisoning after eating the carcass of three elephants killed by poachers in Botswana. There was also the sickening news that Japan had begun whale hunting again after a 30-year ban. He had also recently watched the incredibly sad viral online video showing a brave orangutan trying to fight the large mechanical digger that was destroying its habitat. It made him feel sick and angry at the human race for their selfish, destructive ways. If you were to ask him what lies in the future for all of you, he would reply, a shelf in the toy shop next to the rubber dinosaurs and action figures. He sees no practical way out for you guys, especially with the predicted future climate change and global warming theories high on the world's agenda. If humanity won't stand up and fight for you now, while something can be done to save you, it's going to get a lot worse as the human population of the earth grows. Your habitat will be destroyed. Tigers and gorillas will be wiped out along with pandas, whales and basically anything that isn't farmed meat, poultry or a house pet. There was a stunned silence in the room. Golzar had one last question. What happens to us when this short story ends? Surely the writer must care for us on another level. I just want to carry on like before and go home to my mother. Miss Perkins sighed whilst looking around at her downhearted class and replied, You are correct, Gulza. Of course you all get to carry on with your comedy jinx and crazy animal capers. He may be simple, but he's not an old meanie. He just wanted you to be aware of the reality out there, just for a brief moment. Who knows? He could be dead wrong about all of this. Though we must never drop our guard and take our wonderful existence here for granted, not for one single moment. The bad guys and poachers never take a day off. Now, Tommy, you can relax and open the classroom door for us all. As it's now playtime and I'm sure you all want to get back to normality. Class, this will be my last day as your teacher here. Tomorrow, Mrs Gibbon will be back to look after you for the rest of the term. Tommy Tiger took a deep breath and opened the classroom door, allowing the sunbeams to light up the class. The kids dashed out and began to play in the schoolyard, just as they did on every other ordinary day. Only Gulzar remained in the room with Miss Perkins. She was shuffling papers around her desk, pretending to look busy. Gulzar coughed into his hand to gain her attention. Is there something else you want to ask me, Gulzar? she inquired. I just wanted to say thanks. With that, he walked away to join his endangered buddies, frolicking in the fictitious playground, as any normal gorilla would do. Epilogue That night, after listening to a bedtime story about unicorns saving the world from dastardly ninja aliens, Gulzar gave his mother Priscilla an extra big hug and a squeeze. It was so unlike him to show this much affection, it brought an unexpected tear to her eye. What was that for, little man? she asked. Gulzar lay his head down on the pillow and pulled up his sheets before facing the wall and closing his eyes. For protecting me from the bad guys. One day, it will be my turn to save others. Priscilla gently kissed the top of his head before switching out the light and closing the door. The end.